How long are we going to hang the baking ducks here? When celebrated chef Wolfgang Puck renovated his famous Spago restaurant in Beverly Hills, there was a buzz I didn't quite get. Is that the new recipe for the short ribs here? Let's taste it. Don't get me wrong, I love a good restaurant, but I'm by no means a foodie. In fact, I clam up when I'm expected to talk about food in any intelligent manner beyond, hmm. I've never had a lobster like that. You're still very young, so it's okay. <laughs> Chef Puck endured my lack of food sophistication with a smile as he tried to explain why everyone else, it seems, is talking about, blogging about, even Instagramming their food. Today, people really know about food. They read about food, they see it on television, they know what good quality is. All of a sudden now, food and wine has become one of the premier conversation pieces. Hey John, let's go fire halibut, black cod, and a broccoli. And the reason for all the talk has little to do with what's in your refrigerator. Chefs, to make it delicious, global, and innovative. It's your cable box. Television made such a big impact of the way we eat in America today. I mean, it has changed the whole climate of eating totally and for the better. When Julia Child took to the airwaves, it seemed cooking shows appealed more to the golf and opera crowd. We're going to make buff bourguignon, beef stew, and red wine. Now, food is cool. Even edgy. I love gooey duck sliced in like this, and apples and like raw seafood to me is amazing. It's as much about pop culture as pop overs, a frenzy fueled by social media. Everybody is a restaurant critic. Everybody. Everybody. So if you mess up a meal today, you can see maybe 200, 300 people know it already before I go to sleep because this guy or this woman <laughs> tweeted it to all their friends. Look what happened this past week when a New York Times critic took a less than charitable bite out of celebrity chef Guy Fieri's new restaurant. It became instant water cooler fodder. People just seem completely and totally obsessed with food and everybody's talking about it. Krista Simmons is a freelance writer and food blogger, part of the food mafia, as she calls it, who sought out a hipster coffee hangout in the industrial section of Los Angeles to chat. I feel like foodism has hit a critical mass in the past five, ten years. And it's been said many times, but I'll say it again, food really is the new rock. And the new groupies are who? <laughs> the foodies. <laughs> the foodies and me. <laughs> <laughs> the food landscape of today, she explains, is as much about social experience as it is sustenance. And when you come into a place and you know the story behind whatever it is you're eating and you know the story behind the chef and you're in this really kind of cool space and you get to chit chat with people around you, it really is about an experience and a feeling more than an actual thing itself. That seems especially true of young Jen Wires, whose social lives increasingly revolve around eating out over anything else. I will probably spend 150 bucks on a tasting menu before I'd go and spend 150 bucks on the Rolling Stones reunion tour. I mean, and I'm not alone in that sentiment. Actually, I really love the Stones, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> okay, eating out comes before almost anything else. Either way, what makes the perfect dish... Are you going to serve a little soy sauce on the side or what? ...can still be a bit mysterious much like the people who spend their lives in search of that secret for a living. I think the more people think about what they're eating, the better. Pulitzer Prize winner Jonathan Gold is the restaurant critic for the LA Times. He says he needs to keep his anonymity so he doesn't get preferential treatment from chefs. But I think that there is a recognition that the best food isn't necessarily what you're going to get at the white tablecloth restaurant. What Gold noticed more than anything in the last few years is good food is where you find it. This is your burrito and your ceviche. Case in point, food trucks. They've driven their way into the hearts and stomachs of foodies everywhere. You have a of those, too. Okay. Farmers markets are teeming, thanks in part to the first lady. We need a wheelbarrow. Who's made her vegetable garden as recognizable as the rose garden. In short, foodies aren't part of an exclusive club anymore. So whenever you're ready, <laughs> when they don't want you at CBS anymore, you come and work with us. <laughs> Food is now in every person's hobby. It can even 
be mine. Oh, wow. That is so good.